A few months ago, I released a video which featured an 1898 voice recording of Buffalo Bill Cody. Stick around for the update. <music> Greetings, everyone. I'm Gail Masenda with History Heights. I appreciate your continued patience as I am working on my speech following surgery for tongue cancer, which was not quite a month ago. I'll try my very best to speak very slowly and clearly. Many of you have written and commented how much you enjoyed hearing the voice of Buffalo Bill from the original 1898 recording. That is the way it sounded to the people of his era. For those of you who prefer that original format, I'll include it with this video and also put a link in the description box below. That original video also includes the context in which the recording was made. Without the context, it loses a lot of its historical significance, so please take a moment to check out that video. And then others of you have been very outspoken in your request to have that recording cleaned up, eliminating all the pops and hisses that are inherent in all early recordings. One of our viewers has graciously offered to clean up that recording using Waves Clarity VX, and we're presenting it to you here now. Thanks, Mark, for your help. Let's take a listen. The forms of intervention have no substitute proposition. They have no plan save those that have already failed. If the government were guided by their advice, butchering, devastation, and barbarity would become permanent social conditions in Cuba. And the unrest, the tumor, and the passion of the last 50 days would take their places as established features of our national life. No man who is not willing to hear about the hideous crimes in Cuba, to read the war speeches of single senators, and look upon the war headlines of the yellow journals every day in the year for the remainder of his actual life, has any right to oppose his aggression in Cuba unless he submits an effective plan for the permanent abatement of the efficiency, which, in the language of the President, has become intolerable. There is one more consideration. Any American who finds himself unable now to support the President in his, in his proposed policy towards Spain shows himself to be perfectly content that this country should exhibit itself in the attitude of a nation that will not fight for its peace and safety, for its honor and self-respect, or in the performance of the duty imposed by humanity and civilization. Ladies and gentlemen, permit me to introduce to you a congress of the rough riders of the world. So there you go. Two versions to compare, each with things to teach us. As always, remember, we can learn from the past, but we do not live there. Go be awesome today and make your own history. Bye for now.